<laughs> it's like it seems like they're on a mission to speed run pissing off their entire player base <laughs> We need actual money in compensation. I seriously want to check for $1,000 as compensation for Polarium's mistake. Okay. Time to talk about it, guys. It's time for this curated experience. Go grab a beer, go get a tea, go get a coffee, go get something to sit, eat, snack, drink, and listen as I curate this experience for you guys. Talking about the Hydra nerf. I'm sorry, they want us to use the word rebalance. Personally, I don't struggle with hydra anymore but that's because i'm an end gamer and i'm pay to win now this isn't going to really affect me but i'm speaking for the majority of players who have been commenting and telling me their woes but not just me directly but everybody and then of course i'm going to read all of your guys's comments because i appreciate all of your guys's comments and i want you to know that i respond i see everything and i i'm going to go over them just to immortalize you guys in my videos and we're going to go over the Reddit posts in regards to these. There's quite a few. We're not going to read every single comment there, but you'll get the general gist. So, some Frankenstein7925 says this is a really good Godforge, uh, Godforge trailer in regards to <laughs> the, the shit that Polarium put out. And yeah, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, probably in a different video, is, is Godforge being too hyped up. In the sense that we're putting it on this pedestal. So much so to the point that it might not live up to those expectations and we might be disappointed. What do you guys think about that? They need to make the poison cloud removable if they're making all these changes. Dude, you killed me with that outro. He's bouncing off my booty cheeks. I love the way he <laughs> That's because that's what Polarium's doing to us. Polarium is bouncing off our booty cheeks. I don't have Wixpool or Trunda. I can go about my day as usual. Yeah. What I love is that they specifically responded to the taunt issue before they did. Said that it was intended, now it's a problem. All they had to do was fix Hydra, and note I commented this months ago in a Hell Hades video, make the respawning heads immune to damage, and the other thing they needed to do, which back then wasn't an issue but became an issue now, was stop the head of mischief from being able to steal shields. He can't steal Veil, so it's clearly possible to limit the buffs he can steal. These devs simply made the fight harder now for new to mid-game players who are trying to get into their Hydra runs. Furthermore, they have completely screwed the entire experience because making this change, uh, making this many changes in one go, true, literally means they're unable to measure the effects of any single change and know what needs to be adjusted moving forward. Well done, Raid. And I think this is a good point, right? Instead of taking it step by step and then fixing those one by one, they implemented a bombardment of changes. And so now if 10 things go wrong, it's going to be, I think, harder to pinpoint and troubleshoot. They're nuking their own game. What's going to happen is they will let this simmer, then turn up the drop rates of mythicals. While people will celebrate finally getting one, Polarium will act like this nerf didn't happen. True. The biggest issue, I mean, that that's true, right? That could definitely happen. They might secretly buff up the mythical rates and just not tell us. And everybody's going to be like, oh, we have mythicals. Hydra's not much of a problem anymore. But it, you know what? It, this, this always happens, right? There's always something new that's going to happen next week to override what's going on now. And then we'll talk about this in like a year later if the game's still around. I mean, just think about it, right? The whole Boozer situation. Nobody's talking about that now because of this, right? So news oversaturation and then... I mean, we're not going to get into it. The biggest issue will be the 1.2 billion points needed for Constellation Prize Chess. It's going to be impossible to hit now for even early late game accounts. El Hades, in his video on the subject, discovered that the shield cap destroys the effectiveness of Wixpool and Hydra. He thought that Wixpool would still be able to function in Clan Boss, but Wixpool, Wixpool's reign in Hydra is over before it even began. Now, I'm glad I skipped the Wixpool event. Which speaks to your comment about chasing champions. Fusions are obviously the way to short circuit the game's RNG. And if you're okay with receiving a random champion, then you won't have to do the participation in the events. But if there's a champion mechanic that you think you must have, then if they give you a way to get that specific champion, you probably won't take it. But now we see that they can take the mechanic away pretty much as soon as it demonstrates its usefulness. That's true. I like to I like trying to tinker with teams to see how different champions work together, which is a good thing because I I pretty much have to figure out some way to get a random champion um, or a bunch of champions to do anything. If players come to realize fusions aren't the way, and let's let's 
look at this again. If players come to realize fusions aren't the way to give you specific champion mechanics, but rather a means to bait and switch you and take your money, fusions will stop generating community interest and people will start randomly pulling star, uh, shards. And this is um, this is a good thing to bring up because now this kind of re-incentivizes me and my stance point to not really focus on struggling for fusions so much. Because the way I've been doing it is I've been very nitpicky about what I've been doing for fusions. Like, everybody told me Eostrid is a not miss champion. Wixbill is a not miss champion. Uh, X, Y, and Z is a not miss champion. But it's just like, I've been around enough where we, we can just expect something to happen. And it's not fair to say that I knew this was going to happen. Nobody knew this was going to happen. In fact, nobody knew Wixbill was going to do the Hydra clan boss stuff that he's doing. Or... I mean, it's about to end, but nobody knew Wixwa was going to do the Infinity comp. It wasn't until after the fact. Nobody knew that it was going to... Well, let me stop you. A lot of people speculated and knew, based on educated experience, that Wixwa was going to be nerfed. Right? We expected this. This was to be expected. Because we knew there is no way Polarium isn't going to stop us from getting these types of rewards. Especially when most of the players can do it. How do we know? I mean, the most recent thing I can think of is freaking um, Eurogrim. Remember Eurogrim? He was kind of better than Battle Kazar at one point, right? He was at the top of his game. Everybody went for him. Everybody got him. Everybody built him, invested resources, booked him, everything. And then what did they do? They nerfed him and said, sorry, teehee. By addressing the issue that involves almost only late and end game players, they made it difficult for everybody. Exactly. Mecha Wixwill comps are out of the question once Taunt was rendered ineffective. Oh, yeah, true. It doesn't look like it's specific for Hydra, probably an overall thing in the end, in the game, for po uh, possibly for future content. Banger outro music selection. <laughs> there you go. Mythicals are out now. We can nerf Trenda. A rebuttal to your concern about the, digest uh, the, dige the digestion mechanic. If you're a newer player, you will likely not get to the point where battle, in the battle, where digestion health starts to ramp up. This mechanic change is intended for higher level players who can reach the turn limit easily. Check Saf's video out. A quantitative analysis on Trunda, it won't make a difference. With some adjustment, may actually increase her damage, actually buffing her in arena. The best thing about raid and power creep is that for normal players, free to play to normal spenders, the game gets more accessible over time, even though pay to win areas of the game get harder. Buffing PvE content to match massive power creep is going to ruin the game for a lot of people, PvE content that you will eventually be able to do might be forever out of reach if they quote-unquote balance PvE content. Hydra used to be PvE, and then they implemented Hydra Clashed and threw us in altogether. HH did an in-depth breakdown, saying Trend is going to be stronger than everybody, just other teams are nerfed. They made the 1% even stronger, nerfed the 99%. I don't mind the Trend to change, it, does, it doesn't ignore Stone Skin, just does extra damage. I think it's like 50%. Trend's cooldown isn't getting reduced. I think it's still like five turns, right? Let's see. Four turn cooldown, five turn cooldown. How viable in the arena is she going to be? Unless she just like a single nuke and then the game's over or the match is over. A five turn cooldown on this move, uh, which I think this is going to be the nuking ability, right? But five turns, dear God. I'm okay with everything except for the digestion and the taunt. Taunt is useless. Digestion change wasn't really needed. I'm I'm with you on not doing Amius. It's fun to me. I don't want to have to change masteries every time I fight them unless they're going to let us change masteries for free. I'm not doing Amius. Yeah. Um I I think I understand why they did the the digestion change. But the thing is, I feel like they did a lot of things. Maybe they could have done like the other guy said one thing at a time and then if they felt like okay, well Trunda is still doing broken amounts of damage cuz they did like 10 things to circumvent Wixwell and Trunda, right? And then adding the digestion thing was just like a, a nice cherry on top to try to mitigate any potential damage. I get where they were coming from, but again, they did like 10 other things. How are people going to work around this? That's the neat part. They don't. Hydra, my guild is fucked. And can we say they're boiling the frogs now? I'm not sure if these passive-aggressive tactics are going to fly with the raid community. Palladium's complicated, uh, complicated solution includes milking the community for every cent. Don't worry, they're going to come for Teox in, a, in six months. Exactly. Uh, completely unrelated. Uh, you two uh, talking about the dog. What happened to Trunda 
happened to Dragomorph. The best thing to happen in a long time in regards to Hydra getting buffed. Just make the game more difficult for everybody because 5% complain about shit only 1% can do. Yeah. Uh, Obitus Joe says to watch uh, Saf's video. The game won't let me pull anything worthwhile, so UNM isn't going to happen. Uh, Ten months ago. I knew they were going to nerf this. I didn't see the four. I didn't foresee the two million in shields. Yeah. What is that outro? Exactly, player. And why? Hydra was never fun. Why not make it more not fun? It's only time. It's time to only bother about getting the one key in for Hydra and then giving it a rest. Serpent's will buff is going to be scoffed or is scoffed. Provoke set and abilities are useless. Good to know. Buffs don't matter. They're going to get stolen and spread. I'm waiting for the I'm quitting raid posts. Yeah. Everybody's going to be like, I'm quitting raid. Personally, I don't think giving heads in vulnerability frames while giving them a decreased turn limit is really fair. Also, increasing the difficulty of Hydra just for the sake of it is kind of meh for mid gamers trying to push into late game. I personally don't give a fuck because I'm more focused on faction wars, but this only further decreases my interest in Hydra. The nerfs are only a good thing. I don't like the Hydra buffs as much, but ultimately it can be worked around and obviously it affects everybody. I'm fine with that. 500% harder for the same rewards, F Plarium. Yet Armand's still reigns in live PvP. This, people, don't play their game. So many things unneeded. Just needed the cap shields and Yumiko can't reset resetters, plain and simple. Just play it even less your loss game. Uh, yes. They killed Taunt with those champions. They're basically useless, even though they said Taunt was working as intended. Nerfing damage during exposed next by giving it a cap. That is a straight nerf to every single damage dealer. Shield comps are dead. Max damage potential is now only 1.2 million. The Wix will nerf is whatever. Uh, Packmaster is straight trash, and there's no new dog in sight, despite their FOMO-inducing teasing. Yeah, that's what I've been saying. I've been saying, hey... A lot of us have been saying it. And then I always get people tell me, hey, uh, wait, we should wait, we should wait. Bro, we've been waiting. We've been waiting. Where the fuck is the dog at? Hydra changes. A nice kick in the teeth for the average player. I'm mostly surprised about the taunt changes, to be honest. Really changes my team. See? A, a, a nice comma here, or maybe a period. Capital R, period right there. Uh, the one use taunt had taken from us. I used taunt in Shogun, but its main use was for Hydra. Our Shogun team's gonna be... Nah, we should be fine. We need actual money in compensation. This is like an automotive recall and us, rather than having to pay for the repairs, their company's fault. I seriously want to check for $1,000 as compensation for Polarium's mistake. You don't own the account, you're just borrowing it. You agreed to the terms in the terms of services you didn't read, but agreed to anyways. They're not even borrowing it. They're just being allowed to use it until the devs decide to shut it down and call it a day. And that day will come when profits drop under 30 to 20% per annual. Anything digitized, you don't actually own it. Steam games, we don't actually own that. Steam could shut down at any point and every game that we bought will no longer be ours. Dragonair is, an, is a more recent example. People, Krakens, were Krakening out here in America for Dragonair. And then they took down Dragonair in the US. So that's... <laughs> or uh, Warhammer. Warhammer had a mobile game a while back, and I, I had a friend who telling me about that. He was like, yeah, I spent quite quite a bit of money in that Warhammer game, and they shut the game down. So all my money in that gacha game was basically just for nothing. So yeah, uh, just, just remember that. Just remember that. But, you know, if you enjoy it, you enjoy it. So I won't take that away from you. I bet Hell Hades is loving this. More players for him when his game gets launched. <laughs> it's like, it seems like they're on a mission to speedrun pissing off their entire player base. <laughs> Doesn't matter, whales will still whale, addicts will still play. They need to have a similar approach to the one blizzard used for Hearthstone. If you have a card or champion that gets nerfed, then you refund the full cost of that card or champion. In RSL's case, that would mean returning books used, the chickens used and needed to 6 star at the very least, would lessen the blow of having to fully build a champion that's useless. I have two Emix fully built, now I'm not going to be using them anywhere. Massive waste of resources. Exactly. The digestion change is the only thing that pissed me off. Trunda and Wix teams are nerfed. Teams are now a lot more equal to each other. Seems like a great change to me. Not to mention reducing the turn limit. Yeah, I can kind of see that. Uh, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a positive, right? Everybody's on a more level playing ground. Agreed. Too many people complaining about rebuilding teams. For the record, I use the Wixville team. Happy about the change. Now I don't have to deal with Trunda teams doing 100 billion damage. Maybe some people don't see this because they weren't endgame, but the gap was huge. I mean, sure, if you count cutting everybody off at the knees to fix two broken abilities for two champions. This guts my entire Hydra setup. 
and I was barely doing enough for the top chest in Nightmare. The cheese team nerfs were needed, of course, but why did they have to punch the rest of us in the dick? <laughs> the good news is I don't have to waste my time trying anymore. I just got to the point where I could get the top chest on hard and was about to move up to Brutal. Now Hydra gets the live arena treatment and no longer exists as far as I'm concerned. This seems a little bit melodramatic. Trunda has needed nerfing in Hydra for ages. Glad they did it. Are average players running Wixpo shield teams? I doubt it. The positive for me here is that they've reduced the max rounds and made it slightly quicker as a clan who lost out this uh, last week or this week to a team where only one player could get over 100 million in clash points, he got over 2.5 billion. It's a decent solution. I could barely get enough damage with 1500 turns. Now I'm fucked. If they wanted to lower the time limit, they should have also lowered the damage required for each chest, including the Hydra Clash ones. Listen, man, I'm with you. My pack master Fellhound was carrying me hard. It's a hard pack master nerf, but they had to fix Hydra Clash, but they didn't fix Clash. It's as bad as it was before. The problems are not the champs or the damage, it's the way Clash has been designed to force players to spend to outdo each other. <laughs> we are really one of the worst communities in gaming. We're never happy. And that's true. It doesn't matter what Polarium does or Polarium doesn't do. I guarantee you, just like content creators, somebody is going to find something to complain about. Something. There's always going to be whiners. It doesn't matter what any of us do. If you're a creator, whether it's a company creating a game or you're a YouTuber creating content, someone's always going to bitch moan and complain about something. They'll find something. Because people who like to complain, that's just who they are. That's the only way that they have control over their lives. You are an absolute goddamn no titty having motherfucking idiot if you think this changes anything. And yeah, Sack Eater said it. Polarium themselves showcase the Trunda Yumiko 2X teams getting 600 million posts, uh, points post-patch, and they weren't even plus four. You will no longer get insane numbers. You'll only get very high numbers. Average players who lucked out on early Trunda though, or built an entire team comp around Wixwell and Yannicka though, tough luck. Not to mention all the changes make Hydra objectively harder for everybody and the random fuck you to taunt for some reason. Remember, this could have been avoided by simply changing how cooldown reduction abilities work, but that would make the whales who got two plus four Yumikos pissed. So instead, we got the worst of both worlds. Those comps still work absolutely fine. Uh, fine. And if you had a Trunda chillin' as your Hydra carry, like yours truly, without the five turn cooldown reduction void legendaries, you're majorly fucked. If it was just fixing broken team comps, I'd agree. But they added mechanics that will also make Hydra more difficult for everybody. That's what I feel too. People safely getting the top chest in Nightmare will still get the top chest in Nightmare no problem, but those getting lower chests or barely getting the top chests are now given more of a challenge too, instead of just balancing the taunt shield Trunda teams. My team should be fine, but I can understand why those in the process of improving their Hydra are so pissed and they've all been set back when they didn't have any of the broken team comps in the first place. The digestion mechanic was harder. The damage reduction on the heads popping up makes it useless trying to deal damage to the head until the buff runs out. Making it harder to free champs after- yeah, this is a huge thing too. Making it harder to free champs after each swallowing can ruin your runs as well. Nothing was a bonus for the average player. Basically, if you're a whale with Michinaki, Akrizia, Yumiko, etc, your damage has been marginally reduced. If you're early mid game player, fuck you. I quit raid a month or two ago. Best decision, let the whales play with themselves, <laughs> and that shit company. People should be happy now. They nerfed Trunda. People got what they wanted. Can we focus now on the fact that the problem was Clash all along? Are we ready yet? No? Well, I'll continue to ignore Hydra then. Asking for nerfs is asking to cheapen the champions after people have spent, after people have spent money and resources to get them. I'll say it again. Some champions are supposes to have supposes are supposed he means to say supposed to have crazy interactions in the game or else the game gets cheap and dull cadaver and clan boss trunda and hydra udk and stone skin these make the champions valuable because they are best at what they do they're the best at what they do in the specific task and are normal champions everywhere else the devs bless their hearts are supposed to ensure champs are ready to be added to the pool not after someone figures out something crazy that's not supposed to be how it works. Not after money's been spent. Definitely not after new champions been released. The issue is still not fixed. 
we're still going to see one player outperforming a clan. Why? Because Hydra Clash is the issue. Nobody cared until Hydra Clash. If a clan does Uber Kraken damage, they should be matched with Uber Kraken clans. Give them better rewards. Yeah, I like that. Hydra Clash, give them, give them tiers. We shouldn't care because it's a level of the game average players truly don't belong in. We're still going to see CCs say it's unfair that some guy beat their clan by himself with blatant disregard for how many clans their account can outperform. All this has done was shown Polarium that we're okay with champions getting nerfed and made it useless after money's been spent, which they don't mind because they can just make a new money champion. Mythical champions. At this point, I'm not upset with Polarium. This is what any business would do. And we're communicating that we're okay with that. This guy is saying it. You know what's wild? They're doing this shit right after the Deck of Fates. So that whole bomb with Deck of Fates popped off. And then they were like, well, you know, since they're already mad, let's go ahead and do this. This is the perfect timing. You know, they're already pissed. Let's, let's, let's throw this onto the pile. And we're communicating with them by continuing to spend and by continuing to engage that we're okay with mediocrity. We're okay with getting dick slapped with a banana. Let's be perfectly honest. Polarium was never, ever going to nerf Yumiko Trenda because they want people to wail for plus four void champs. This is just another part of them being shitty. If you were doing billions of damage, that really shouldn't be big of a change. If you're an average player who lucked out, you're getting a nice big hard Polarium dick shoved up your throat, shoved down your throat. Better pull for Yumiko if you want the good numbers. I don't get the complaining. Does everybody not remember how Hydra was when it first came out? It's supposed to be a challenge. Hydra became a joke. Now they're adding a bit of work back into it. It's healthy because let's face it, the game has become trivial. Trivia, am I saying that right? Trivial? Everywhere else. And the PvE players outnumber the PvP players. I am the first person to, to take a shit on Polarium. But seriously, we wanted Hydra nerfs and changes, and we got them. If you're struggling with Hydra now, yeah, that's not going to feel good, but now you have something to work towards. You're defending them, so you're obviously not the first person to shit on them. Reasons to shit on them. Taunt removed for zero reasons. Trunda's skills were changed. Hydra was made harder for everybody. Bearing in mind, the changes could be one. Anyway, you're defending Polarium. It's okay to be a shill, but don't pretend you're being the voice of reason when there's plenty of reasons to be unhappy with this change. I don't get the complaining. Because people are salty, their cheese strats aren't going to work anymore, thinking Hydra is the CB where they have to kill all difficulties instead of challenging content. This dude has a long history of complaining. You've been playing the game for years but barely do enough damage? <laughs> That's a you issue. How can people complain about everything? <laughs> Because they're humans. I really feel like this is a low-key nerf to champions like Ninja, Varl, and Harima. Also, looks like a slight nerf to Teox because now AoE is going to be ideal damage since single target nukes will, with respawn will only decapitate the head with 100% reduction. Looks like you'll want to down multiple heads at once if possible. The current meta is too limiting. The biggest bullshit line in the Hydra Changes video was, we want you to experiment with different tactics and teams. Yet they basically made the taunt tactic useless, meaning taunt champions just took a value hit, including Emic and Packmaster. Made the Wixwell Yannicka shield teams no longer viable, Trenda teams still viable, just not as potent, Yumago is still busted, HH showed that some people could easily substitute Taurus for Trunda. So yeah, basically made less champs useful in Hydra. I talked about a potential Wix nerf, and a lot of people on Reddit said that they're fine with the nerf as long as Trunda gets nerfed. Was that a lie, as I suspected? You have to read between the lines. Polarium just makes Hydra harder, so in future, they can create new champions to fight those new mechanics equals more money for them. They don't care to improve the game. They don't want to rebalance anything. They just want money. We have to boycott Hydra. Boycotts aren't going to work. Nobody follows it. You're better off quitting. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's easy to talk big game online about boycotting and then you're still doing your Hydra keys because nobody sees your account. Like the deck of fate, it's only through loss of engagement, people not doing it, will the devs listen. Somebody commented on my, my video the other day talking about how just because in regards to the deck of fates and, and some content creators still doing the deck of fate pulls even though they were complaining about it being, being an issue, that's not okay. And I don't want to call anybody out or, or be critical of anybody, but... I've always been the type of guy who's just like, I think you can be critical 
but you can also still be respectful. So I'm not trying to disrespect anybody. That's not my intent, but I'm going to be critical about people, uh, certain people, um, and not just content creators, but anybody who's complaining about something and then still engaging with the thing that with the very thing that they're complaining about. Because you know you you have to have principles uh, to some point. Like I understand it's just the game, but it's also one of those things where and I could be just getting in too deep, right? No diddy, but. At the same time, it's just like, I want to see changes in the game. It's just like boycotts don't work because a lot of people won't follow through with it. Somebody told me like, oh, you know, just because a CC does something like pull a bunch of stones, it doesn't mean that a bunch of people are going to follow suit. That's not entirely true. It is in human nature for people to just follow other people. Imagine this, you're sitting in traffic, nut to butt, and one guy decides to go off-road and create his own lane. It's illegal. But guess what? Because he did it and someone else started seeing that he was doing it, they began to do the same thing. Before you know it, you have dozens of cars driving in that lane. This guy basically heralded the sheeps. And so now everybody is doing the one thing that they saw the first guy do. If CCs complain about something, but they still engage with that, they're sending a message that it's not that big of a deal, that it's okay to do it. And what do you think is going to happen? Some people... Uh, even if they're complaining about it, are still going to engage with the content. And those numbers get sent to Polarium, and Polarium takes it and says, oh, the players are okay with mediocrity, so we're going to keep pushing them down even further. The other rebuttal that somebody told me was, content creators need the new champions to create content, or they need to do this for content. And it's like, I get it to a certain extent. Issue is, if you're complaining about it, I don't think even if it is for content, you should be doing it. I think it's very easy to make content about something else. Like I understand you want the views, uh, first mover advantage, but for this specific instance, one, you're highly against it and you're telling everybody to be against it or you're preaching it, but then if you're pulling for it, you know what I mean? It, it's just not adding up. Like I, again, I get you want to make content, but make content on something else. Or you can do what I've done, like Xena. Xena was a perfect example. I didn't support Xena. I wanted Xena as a champion, but I did not like, I, I just, it didn't sit well with me. And because of that, I didn't buy Xena, but I knew somebody who had Xena because they were gonna whale and whales will whale. So I borrowed his account and I jumped on and I did a Xena showcase. I was still able to create the content for Xena, but I didn't have to support Xena. And I even multiple disclaimers in my description, in the video and in the comments saying, hey, don't support this, but I'm showing you guys if you want to see it to provide that if you guys want to see it, that this is what Xena does. It's one thing to say and complain about something, but it's another thing to do something about it. Hydra is ruined by Hydra Clash. Obviously, Clash is driving the balancing since Clash is also what drove the issues. Nobody cared about Trunda teams before the Clash. Nobody bothered to even try a Yannicka shield growth before the real Clash started. Cheese teams like this are wildly unnecessary if you're just aiming for a one key. Taunt loop was always a progression shortcut. I don't love Hydra Clash, but at the same time, I get why Polarium pushed Clash. Polarium wants or needs players to keep pushing to improve their teams. That's what sells shards and energy. Prior to Clash, it was easier to solve Hydra as long as your clan downed the Hydra and you did enough to get the desired reward chest. There wasn't motivation to really push damage. Similar to CB, once you're getting the top chest, there's no point in trying. Clash is their answer, the carrot that keeps players interested and invested in continuing to improve their teams. Clash didn't make Hydra worse, it exposed how bad Hydra was all along. Straight up lying about nerfs. Saying one week ago there wasn't going to be a nerf to shield scaling and then nerfing it this week seems insane. It pisses me off because you just did another Wixwell event, the progressive event for Wixwell, right? And I got a second one, although it was not going to build them both because the nerf was mentioned, decided to BC. Polarium stated, oh, decided because Polarium stated it wouldn't happen. Also, nerfing taunt is insane. Most taunt champions only do one thing, which is taunt. They said there weren't any stealth nerfs. Can't be a stealth nerf if you make a video about it. Our solution to fix overblown Hydra Clash scores is to nerf Trenda and Shield teams while adding more difficult Hydra mechanics so that the Krakens will still brute force their absurdly overpowered accounts. This, in turn, will make Hydra significantly more difficult for the majority of the player base that never use the teams and don't have massive champion rosters or top tier gear or souls who are barely scraping to get the top chest in the respective difficulty. We're going to continue to monitor and listen to the player feedback. <laughs> listen to the player feedback? BT Dubs. Oh hey, there's this new mythical champion that has infinite shield growth and does a lot more damage than the pre-nerf Trenda. Imagine that. 
You completely misread their statement. They said a Wixwell nerf would not happen without a Trunda nerf. It was an indirect confirmation of a Wixwell nerf. Oh, I see. It was an indirect confirmation that Wixwell nerf was happening. J dude, equivocation with Polarium, dude. Equivocation to the nines. Speech level 99, bro. So what's the point of taunt anymore? Instead of completely nerfing it, they should have made taunt do what it's supposed to. If Ninja has the mark, and is about to be devoured, Emic has Taunt, Emic should be devoured instead of Ninja. That way, Taunt would still have a place in the strategy, making your damage dealers protected and free to do their work. This is 100% what they should have done. This is the correct fix to Taunt. Make it force target only. You should get a job at Polarium. That's a fix right there. <laughs> Polarium Taunt these nuts. <laughs> Got him. The worst nerf. Decapitated head will have HP. Yep. Polarium sucks at boss designs. Every boss is going to end up with four passives, listing all the mechanics they're immune to and ignore. <laughs> Taunt is working as intended, quote-unquote. Scratch that, quote-unquote. It's going to be funny seeing the mismatched in Clash now for a while. Not going to lie, between those who had really good teams available, but Wixpoil, Yannick, or Trenda was obviously better, and the clans that only had broken teams, but nothing great for a no-cheese team. Yeah, everybody's going to be mismatched now. A polite PSA to players that use Hydra Shields, Taunt, Trenda, etc., I would kindly, very gently, say that when you spend resources to develop champions to make these teams that you know are clearly overpowered and do things that were likely not intended by the devs, do so accepting that one day it will likely get changed without compensation. This is my problem. Trunda needed a nerf. Nothing else did. The only things that actually needed to be changed in Hydra, double Yumiko. Yeah? Adding a shield cap. Fix the bug in Trunda's A2. These would fix issues people complained about and would it be buffing Hydra and nerfing everybody's teams just to piss everybody off? <laughs> Why do that when we can piss everybody off instead? Diddy says, uh, Polarium says. Guys, people are actually playing Hydra and calling it proper endgame content. What can we do? <laughs> Polarium probably. They're gonna milk that cash cow dry before nerfing Yumiko. Call him daddy while I holler, man, that boy's so damn good looking.